Canyon Lake. I'm Pastor Deanne. Welcome to worship. I'm so glad that you're here today. We are starting a new series and it's called Foundations. It's all about what makes us who we are as United Methodists. It is deep, good stuff. And we're really excited to dive into this series with you today. We're also sharing in communion today. So I invite you to take a moment now to find some bread or a cracker or some juice and some juice and something to drink to get ready. I have mine ready to go. Got a piece of bread and some juice in my favorite teacup. Let's begin. Hey Canyon Lake, it's Pastor Brett. I'm your teaching pastor here, and I'm really glad to join you this glorious day as we get to come and turn our minds and our hearts toward the God who loves us immeasurably. Will you continue in worship with me as we pray this prayer together? Loving God, our parent and friend, be at work in us as we worship today. Strengthen us from the inside out with the riches of your love and mercy. Let Christ be born anew in us and become rooted within us so that we may begin to know more and more the, your love's width and, and length, height and depth. Help us to know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge that we may be filled entirely 
with the fullness of God's grace. Amen. Friends, let's send it over to Aaron and our Canyon Lake kids for Kids Time. Canyon Lake. It's me, Erin Woods, your children's ministry coordinator, and today I have brought two friends with me. This is Bob and this is George. Bob and George are here today to help us talk about grace. See, Bob and George are friends, so Bob and George sometimes get in a fight, and sometimes they may hit each other or not be nice to each other. What would you do if a friend wasn't nice to you? Hmm? What would you do? Would you get really mad at them? I think that's perfectly normal. Here's what happens when we get mad at each other. We get mad at each other and we <gasps> explode. Yes, we get mad and we explode. But that doesn't always feel good, does it? But we are all have times when we're not nice to each other and we want to forgive, but forgiveness is really hard. Let's pretend George here did something that wasn't nice. So maybe he again wasn't nice to his friends or hit his brother or sister. Maybe he disobeyed his parents. These are all things that are not nice at all, are they? George has something called grace. When he does something bad, this is what happens. Do you see that? He's not popping. You see, the reason why George doesn't pop is because he has water. And that's like us. We have God's Holy Spirit in us. So when we do things that are, are bad, God forgives us. Not that we deserve it. We don't deserve it. But God gives it to us anyway. That's called grace. Maybe I can explain it in another way. Let's try a little game. I have a Kit Kat and some water. And we're gonna play Guess My Number. And if you can guess my number, then you can have the candy. If you don't guess the number, then I get to dump this cup of water on your head. Doesn't that sound fun? Are you nervous? Okay, I'm thinking of my number. Can you guess what it is? Did you guess? My number was seven. What was your number? Did you guess it? Awesome! Then you get this candy. Did you get it wrong? Bet most of you got it wrong. Now I get to dump this cup of water on your head. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you the gift of not getting this water poured over your head, even though you don't deserve it because you didn't guess my number. And I think I'll still give you the candy. Do you think that you can try forgiving others or doing something for someone else even though they don't deserve it? I know you can. I hope you have a great week and I hope to see you soon. Hey friends, as we turn toward prayer time, we're gonna uh, go to Parker as he leads us in song. And I wanna invite you to just let these words wash over you uh, as a time of stillness and a time of, of centering ourselves before God. Let this song be a prayer for you. Let's sing together. Through the rubble and the wreckage I've forgotten who I was You reached out for my found me in the dust My soul had given up You wouldn't leave me undone Rebuilder My walls were crumbling Restore Brought the light into the room and filled my lungs so I could learn to breathe again. My shelter, my warmth in the coldest night, my helper. You held me up till I could stand. 
promise that you are rebuilding me. Well, I have seen the dawn. Start to break between the cracks. The beginnings of a day. Would come to pass. You brought me back to life. You're the morning in my night. Oh, rebuilder, my walls were crumbling. Restorer. Brought the light into the room It filled my lungs so I could learn to breathe again My shelter, my warmth in the coldest night My helper, you held me up till I could stand On the promise that you are rebuilding me Rescued my heart and showed me that joy can come through pain. You brought dance into these streets, a second chance for peace. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rebuilder, my walls were crumbling, restore. You brought the light into the room and filled my lungs so I could learn to breathe again. My shelter, my warmth in the coldest night, my helper. You held me up till I could stand. I promise that you are rebuilding me. Promise that you are rebuilding me. Friends, you pray with me. Holy and good God, before we even knew you, before we were born, you you loved us and claimed us as your own. And God, not a, not a moment goes by that we aren't wrapped up in your love and care. And not just us, but God, all of your creation. This day, help us to know, help us to know the, the love that you have for us like we've never known it before. God, today, speak your grace upon us. Breathe it into us. Remind us that, that our very breath, our very heartbeats, all of our lives are a gift of your amazing grace. God, we give you praise for all the things that you're doing in our lives and, and all the things that you will continue to do. God, cover us in your grace and your love this day and speak into us that you might make us new, that you might help us to live, to breathe out, to spread your love and your grace and your peace to all that we encounter. God, we pray all of this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let's send it to Pastor Deanne for today's teaching message. Hi, I'm Kala, and I'll be reading scripture today. The first is from Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. 
He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love, and he will exult over you with loud singing. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. You are saved by God's grace because of your faith. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you possessed. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. Instead, we are God's accomplishment, created in Jesus Christ to do good things. God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. I'm asking God to give you a gift from the wealth of his glory. I pray that God would give you inner strength and power through the Spirit. Then Christ will live in you through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground onto which you sink your roots and on which you have your foundation. This way, with all of God's people, you will be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep his love is. You will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I am praying this so that you may be completely filled with God. Thanks, Calla, for reading scripture today. Our new series is really gonna dig deep. We're exploring the building blocks that make us who we are as United Methodists, and they're so good. Today, we're starting with grace. When I was 15, I was serving soup at a soup dinner with my youth group in my hometown at Canton. I was a shy kid and I was pretty nervous about getting out there and interacting with all of those people, but I did it. And everything was going fine until, have you ever seen a cat that has lost its whiskers and how it bumps into everything? Well, that's me my entire life. I tripped while bringing a bowl of soup to one of the women in the church. Yep, I accidentally dumped a boiling hot bowl of chicken noodle soup on her lap. I can only imagine how much that hurt. I died a thousand deaths in that moment. You know how we can all say and do things sometimes when we're hurt that are really hurtful? Well, she just grabbed some napkins, patted my arm and said, it's okay, I'm fine, thank you for serving. Grace, it's at the heart of who we are as United Methodists. John Wesley, who began the Methodist movement in the 1700s, in England and then in America, defined grace as God's bounty, God's free, undeserved favor. It's the unearned loving action of God in us through the Spirit. Grace saturates all of creation. Grace is God's presence to create, to heal, to forgive, and to make us new. Grace breathed the world and us into existence. Have you ever heard that thing about how Eskimos have over 50 words for snow? Here are just some Eskimo Aleut words. Kanak means snowflake. Kanavluk means fine snow. Kanakok means snow on the ground. I could go on. Sometimes one word is just not enough to describe something that's beautiful and powerful. In our denomination, we love grace so much that, well, I'm not gonna list over 50 words for grace, but I would like to talk about three of them with you today because they're part of our foundation. Grace number one is called prevenient grace. In other words, grace that goes before. It's Zephaniah 3, 17, grace. God in our midst singing over us. It's grace that woos us before we even know that God is there. Have I ever told you about my friend Andy? We became friends in the summer before eighth grade. He gave me a horse poster. I was crazy about horses and kissed me on the cheek at the corn carnival. He was my rock solid friend from then on out. When someone broke my heart the following summer, Andy came and picked me up in his truck and took me to the Sioux River Folk Festival at Newton Hills just to cheer me up because that's who he was. He was always there, my friend. 
Then on Valentine's Day, my sophomore year, I found a Valentine on my desk. Now, that thing where you bring Valentines to school for your friends had pretty much ended in elementary school for me, just like it probably did for you. But there it was on my desk. And it wasn't just on my desk. It was covering my entire desk. Someone had taken red construction paper and taped several pieces of it together to make the biggest card I have ever seen. That same someone cut out red hearts and little frou-frou things and glued it all over the card. And when I opened it up on the inside, it said, Love, Andy. Without my even realizing it, Andy had been wooing me for years gently and steadily showing up with love. Did you know that God is wooing you? Every glorious sunset, every hug that fills that lonely place inside, every time you smell the ponderosas or something else that you love to smell, these are grace too. It's a whisper from God saying, I love you. That's Prevenient grace. Isn't that cool? Grace number two is justifying grace. Relationships are a two-way street, right? One person can't do all the work. If God's grace begins by wooing us before we even know that God is there, God's justifying grace has to do with a moment that we say yes to God's wooing love. That kind of grace is shown in many ways in scripture. It can be called salvation or healing, having one's sins forgiven, being made new, being born from above like Jesus talks about to Nicodemus in John 3. As a young child, I remember seeing my sister walk down the aisle at Albion United Methodist Church in Iowa. She couldn't have been older than nine or 10 I didn't know what was going on, but I know now that it was an altar call where our pastor had invited people to come forward to say yes to God's invitation to a relationship. Back then, I only knew that something special, deep, and to be wondered about had happened. I found out for myself as a teenager the summer before my eighth grade year at camp when I decided to come forward and say yes to God. I'm still living into what that means. And I've also found that I've needed to recommit myself to say yes again so many times. When I get lost, when I'm stuck, when I'm grieving or broken, when I'm sick or I've just gotten sort of blah. What a gift to be able to bring our prodigal selves home to God and know that the grace of God is already running to meet us, just like Jesus told us about in Luke 15 in the story of the prodigal son. Read that if you've never read that story. Justifying grace is Ephesians 2 grace. It's God's resurrection love, a gift, making us new, naming us and claiming us. Grace number three is sanctifying grace. Did you know that grace never stops calling us to grow? Sanctifying grace is grace at work in us after our yes, helping us to grow more and more like Jesus, to shape, teach, and refine us. It's God's spirit at work in us, making us into more than we could be on our own. It's God calling us higher, and we experience this sanctifying grace in so many ways through worship, through study, through prayer, through small groups, through Sunday school. It's why we have Sunday school for all of our lives, and we don't stop just when we're children. I had a wonderful conversation with one of our Canyon Lake United Methodist friends this week. She is sensing God calling her to more, to follow more closely, to grow, to allow herself to be an instrument of God's love in our world. She has discovered something about life with God that we all need to know. 
we will never reach the point when we have seen all that God has to offer to us and to our world. We will never come to the end of the depths of God's love. It's Ephesians 3, 16 through 19 grace, exploring the width, the height, the length, and the depth of God. God's sanctifying grace is like a deep pool. No matter where we are on our journey of faith, we've only dipped our toes in the water. There is always more and God is beckoning us to step more fully into the water. God is beckoning us in that way, you and me, to step more fully into the more, to sink in, to dive in, to discover the riches, the power, the fire, and the abundant life that comes when we come to know God and allow God to work in us more and more fully. Our Canyon Lake soul sister, who's getting ready to jump into more, is in her 90th decade of life, savoring it for all it's worth, saying yes and letting God say yes in her. Here's the most awesome thing. When we allow God to say yes in us more and more, this grace doesn't just transform us, it rubs off on others. The more we let God's grace shape us, the more it shines in us, and the more that others will see it and want to know where that comes from and want to know what it is that is causing you to glow. Are we gonna mess up sometimes still? Yes, of course. Are we going to fall short, get grumpy, and forget who and whose we are? Yes, but we don't give up, we open up and keep growing so grace can shine. And that's how we can change the world. That wonderful woman who showed kindness and love to me when I dumped hot soup on her lap that day, she was shining with God's grace. In that moment, she was Jesus to me, saving me from shame. She was God holding tight to me, inviting me to keep trying. And she was the Spirit whispering to me, Come to me, beloved one. That same Spirit is wooing us. That same God is calling us to say yes. That same Jesus is inviting us into abundant life, into the more. That's grace. Isn't it awesome? Let's pray. Oh, gracious God. Help us to hear your still, small voice speaking gently over us and wooing us to come to you. Help us, God, to say yes, to embrace the new life that you offer. God, if, 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 we're, if some of us here have never done that today, then God, help us to take this time now to say yes to you, to invite you to live in us and through us to make ourselves a home for you in our hearts. And God, help us to dive more deeply into your sanctifying grace. Make us more and more into your image. Help us to live that out in our world so that we can shine. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you said yes to God today in a new way, Pastor Brett and I would love to talk to you about that. We would love to share part of that journey with you. It's such an incredible thing. And we are in this together. I'm so thankful. Today we're celebrating communion together and I'm so glad. Communion is all about grace. Tasting the love of God here and now. So please find your bread or cracker, juice or drink, and let's begin. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he sat down to dinner with his friends. He knew that they would need a way to touch and to taste his love and God's grace in a powerful, special way. And so he sat down with them. And after the dinner, he took bread and he broke it. And he 
and he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, take and eat, take and drink. This is God's love given for you. Do this always to remember me. Please pray with me. Oh, generous God, please bless our bread, bless our drink. Make them be Jesus for us, we pray. His grace that heals, his love for the world and for us. Amen. And if you haven't already done so, take and eat, take and drink. And remember God's gift of grace for you. Amen. Amen. Y'all, we come now to our, our time of giving, and I just want to say thank you uh, for your generosity and, and for all the ways that you help support Canyon Lake so that we can keep being the church in the world. If you've got a gift that you would like to share, um, you can do that in a few ways. You can bring it by the church office if you're here in Rapid City. Um, you can mail us a check at 3500 Canyon Lake Drive, uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, 57702. Or uh, you can give online, and that may be the easiest. Just go to clumc.com, and you can designate exactly where and when uh, you want your funds to come out. Thank you uh, for all of your generosity. And that actually leads us into our announcements today, too. This week, we had a, a visitor, a representative from Feeding South Dakota, who came and brought us this amazing uh, plaque that, that just thanked us for all of the ways that we helped them uh, in this last year pandemic year and, and just during a hard time for our community. And I wanted to pass it on to you all because it is just a testament to the ways that you are being the church. And I'm so, so grateful uh, for all that you do for our community here and abroad. So thank you all so much for your work. Um, for the young adults among us, I also wanted to let you know that we have an event coming up on July 8th at 6.45 p.m. at the Cave Collective. Uh, and so you're invited to come on down. We're going to have some good, good conversation, and I will even buy you uh, a coffee and maybe even a treat, too, if you want one. So come hang out with me uh, and with some other young adults, and let's, let's build some relationships and glow, grow closer to God uh, in the process. So friends, with that, thank you all so much. Uh, for being the church and for being the church with us. And with that, here's Pastor Deanne with today's blessing. 
thanks so much for being here with us today for worship. We're so glad that you came. And now let's end our time of worship together with this blessing, and then we'll wrap it up with the song. As you go out into the rest of your day, as you go out into your world, go out knowing that the grace of God goes with you, wooing you, ready to make you new, and inviting you to dive in deeper with every beat of your heart, every breath that you take, now and always. Amen. See you next time.